All right, people, we are back on gaming, and I want to say before I get started, uh, you know, I do this week in and week out, you know, seeing the problems that's going on in, you know, in the community here, and, and not just the community in YouTube, all right, I don't want to feel like I'm picking on anybody, not just the community in YouTube, but on forums, on Twitter, you look at the industry in general, you know, you see all these problems, and I want to talk about a little thing called change. Now, as of late, we've seen a lot of people get upset over things that are pretty ridiculous, all right? We've seen a lot of death threats being, you know, made to, you know, uh, developers and companies and things like that. And I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later in this video. But understand, I think a lot of people don't understand, when you try and push change, and it also goes for other YouTubers here uh, who have attempted, you know, to get this information out to you, you know the gamer because we care enough to give you this information you know and talk about these issues uh you're always going to be met with an equal resistance and i'm sure i'll say this in the future as well you know you're always going to be met with an equal resistance which will be a clash and will, which will cause drama we know that all right and you have a lot of grown men coming out i can't even call them men at this point i don't even want to call them men at this point i don't come out and say oh there's no need for drama but drama goes hand in hand with trying to make change and if you look at things within our history it doesn't have to be gaming you know what i mean if you look at things within history and you see all the problems you know that we've had at the status quo there's always been drama and resistance when it comes to forcing change so this is no different it may feel like we're going in circles but maybe those type of things that we see these days maybe there is hope maybe you know what I mean? For things I've seen this week, it seems like there are some gamers who are really willing to put themselves on the line and say, hey, look, this has got to go either go back to the way things were or we have to clean this up pronto. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that. And I understand by my tone of voice, you're probably saying, well, you don't seem like you're in a good mood yet. Does it look like I'm in a good mood? Exactly. So regardless of the positive news, you know, there's still that lingering effect of people who will always try to resist things. So let's get started today. Okay, I want to thank you people for watching the video. Thank you for the comments for the last, in the last video. It was, at least I'm still reading those comments and we've had some good conversations in them. So as far as I'm concerned, let's get, you know, on this video. And we're going to start off as usual with EA. Not so much for their bullshit today due to the fact that we have so many more important issues to get at. You know what I mean? And talk about. But we will start with EA. Now, with EA. EA Origins to become all digital service next month. I feel as though that is a big, a big mistake, huge mistake. But, you know, whatever. If that's what they want to do. Remember, they've been saying for the previous two, three years now, you know, digital is going to be the future. Digital is going to be the future. If you force your hand on it, then of course it's going to be the future. If gamers want to play your, you know, use your product, play your product, of course it's going to be the future. It's not, you know, it's not that it's going to naturally evolve into that, you're pushing the issue, you're pushing the envelope, all right? And like I said, gamers are not standing up and saying, hey, you know, I'm, uh, we've talked about this last week, a lot of you left, you know, a lot of comments saying, I don't understand why EA, you know, why people still support EA, and they, I don't know either. I really don't know. Like I said, if you go buy, buy stuff you used then, or something, you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why EA still doesn't get the message. They've been barking up this tree for so long about all digital, and now they're trying to make the move with Origins. And for those you know, I've been complaining about Origins for years. I said, I won't use it. That's why I didn't play EA games online. I was like, I'm done with it. You know what I mean? Because they wanted all this information from you, and then we found they were looking at your tax, uh, tax records and things, and we saw the proof of that. And yet, I still had gamers when I was doing those Fight Night videos, uh, you know, single player videos, Hey, why don't you play online? What are you scared? No, because EA is in your personal business. That's why. And yet they thought that was okay. Oh, that's just random. That's that's just that's just you know something that's just going to happen naturally. No, that's not something that happens naturally from a video game company. No, it's not. But let them believe what they want. They will do whatever they want to play their games online. It's absolutely ridiculous. I just, besides the three to six month rule thing they have in their claws where they can shut down a game online, you've got to be kidding me. Anyways, I want to move on. Titanfall cheaters banished to cheat, uh, to cheater filled servers. This is a good thing. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand why people need to cheat anyway to begin with. I mean, the game isn't hard. I mean, you're, you're shooting a bunch of bots pretty much. What the hell is there to cheat about? But whatever, this is what they're doing, 
And this is a good thing. I don't know if it can be manipulated or, you know, to make people out to be cheaters. We don't know how, you know, too much in depth on how this goes. However, I will say that this is a good move for companies. People who are cheating, you should be ashamed of yourselves. The game is way too damn easy for you to be cheating. Now, I want to move on. We got to talk about Lee Lin Yi. Senator Lee Lin Yi, all right? Or trying to be Senator again, Lee Lin Yi. Uh, understand, people, that this is something that is, it, it's hilarious to me. Because for those who've been watching my videos for a while, you know, for years, I, I bagged on this guy because he was so, you know, against violent video games and, you know, corruption and, uh, you know, and it, it would seize the children's minds and, you know, they would turn them out to be killers and rapists and, and mass murderers. And yes, this is what this guy was on. If you remember, you know, he had his little following that would destroy video games at one point and it's just absolutely ridiculous with Lee Ling Yi trying to stand up to the gaming industry and trying to say that this is the problem with kids today when we know that's not true well Mr. Yi has been arrested on the charges of bribery and corruption that's right and when we mean bribery I mean he was trying to get guns that's right, guns. Not not just guns, I'm sorry, missiles. Missiles that you fire over the shoulder. I mean, like, what are you going to do with those? Seriously, what, what are you doing? And this is what makes me feel as though this type of trading, if you look at other countries and you hear what they have to say about America and how they destroyed their homes and how they forever hate them and how they brought weapons into, you know what I mean, into their, you know, their country and started wars, this is a problem. You know, and for Lee Ling Yi, a person who's against violent video games is actually causing violence in the real world. Of course, we're going to say, hey, it was going to happen. He's a hypocrite. What do you expect from a politician? I get it. All right. But this is going way too far. God knows what connections, God knows what intent he had for these type of things. And here's the thing. Now that he's been arrested for this, all right, apparently he had a middleman who was the connect. And this guy... Uh, his his alias is called Shrimp Boy. That's right, Shrimp Boy. And a lot of people laughed at it at first. But understand, Shrimp Boy is no joke. Let's look at this dude. This is what they put on TV real quick. This is his, so far, his arrest record, his rap sheet so far, we'll say, in crime or within, you know, knowing the connections of Lee Lin Yi. That man is no joke. Hired for murder, arson, racketeering, like, that man is no joke. Now, I will put like this since then, California Senate has suspended three Democrats, including Lee Ling Yi, right? And Lee Ling Yi has, a, has appeared, he's appeared in court and his bail is set at 500000 Now, understand, 500000 for a man like that is a drop in the bucket, okay? God knows what backers he has. God knows what he was going to do with these things. And I will put it like this. If you think, and I'm very doubtful that this guy is going to spend any time, and I mean any time, in jail for this. If anything, the shrimp boy dude, the middleman, he's going to take all the flack for this. He's going to get all the time for this because that's how it works. The top guy doesn't really get much. If he has all the connections, it's always a street guy who takes all the blunt, you know, takes all of the blame. So understand, Li Ling Yi, as far as I'm concerned, he has proven that he is a hypocrite. He is the disgusting human being. If you have to sit here and, and, and try and, you know, bribery and all for weapons and all, you are what's wrong with America. You are what's wrong with our system. It's not the kids. It's you. And you have proven that. Thank you. You have. However, every time that I defend the industry or like that, things of that nature, you know, and try to back them when it comes to violent video games, because they have the right to make violent video games they want. They have an age restriction, you know? I don't have a problem with that. You know, against people like Lee Ling Yi. But as soon as I back them, then here comes the immaturity from the very same industry that I back. Or as I should say, that we back, that we support. Because we all know that, you know, Facebook bought out Oculus, uh, Oculus VR, Oculus, I'm sorry, VR, and people were going crazy over it. Well, Cliffy B, who, if you don't know, is an investor, okay, comes out and calls Notch because Notch pulled Minecraft from it, from, you know, the VR. He pulled it from it. He was like, I'm, I'm, I don't want anything to do with this. You know what I mean? Cliff VB calls Notch a pouty kid. That's right, a pouty kid for pulling Oculus, the Oculus Rift version, uh, Oculus, I'm sorry, Rift version of Minecraft. All right? The VR. And this is what I don't understand. Because when this report came out, people started agreeing with Cliff VB, which makes no sense to me. 
all right? Whether it was on a forum or on Twitter or on YouTube, we're seeing people side with Cliffy B. You've got to be kidding me. First off, all right, this is business. If Cliffy B wants to address this, he should address it the right way. If you're going to ask why Notch pulled this stuff, why don't you contact him and say, hey, man, what's going on? Why did you do this? Instead, you decide to go, oh, he's a pouty kid. You don't just start throwing insults around in business. No, you don't do that. That type of attitude is the problem with the industry today. And for people to sit here and say, I agree with him. What's wrong with you? You're, you're advocating this type of behavior. And you should know this type of behavior becomes a gateway. You know this. Because his fans are going to see it and say, hey, it's okay for him to act that way. And that means I can act that way. And whoever else agrees with him, you're advocating saying, hey, well, if that's the case, your fan base is watching and saying, well, then we can act that way. It's a gateway. And here's the problem with that. Because Notch responds to Cliffy B saying, hey, look, yeah, you want to call me a pouty kid and say I'm taking my ball home? Fine. That's fine. But understand this, Cliffy B. Minecraft was potentially going to be free for VR. Free. So what are you complaining about? See, Cliff, as we know as of late, as we've seen the reports in months and months, all he's worried about is money. He's not worried about the gaming industry. He's not worried about the community, how it affects them. Money, money, money. That's all it is with Cliff. I don't know why people even take Cliff seriously anymore, as far as I'm concerned. Anybody agreeing with what he said, there's something wrong with you. Because of the way he went about it. It's not, what, it's not exactly, you know... Him being upset because he's an investor and you're losing, you know, you're, you're losing potential money if someone's pulling something, that, that's fine. He wants to be upset about that, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But when you start name calling in business, in business, there's a problem. And then for people to say, hey, I agree with that. No, you're, you're just as bad as him. You are. And I don't care who gets mad. You're just as bad. But... Like I said, Nash responded and said it was, you know, free to promote, you know, it was supposed to be free to promote the VR. And the, like I said, the links will be in the info bar. Now, here's the thing what I mean about Gateway, okay? Gateway attitude. Once again, Oculus VR employees got death threats and harassing phone calls that extended to their families. Why? First off, gamers, you're wrong. Flat out wrong. We've talked about this many times. Why are you, is that, the, is that your go-to move? Death threats? Because those employees that you're sending stuff to, that you don't need to do that. All right? Why didn't Cliffy get any, you know, why didn't Cliffy B get any death threats? He's an investor. Why didn't he get any? All right? Like I said, you can't sit here and say these employees, because of this move, they deserve death threats. That's absolutely ridiculous. And if you're sending death threats for that, then what are you doing when it comes to serious issues? And I understand it's probably trolling. You're saying, oh, it's just the internet. But no, it's the behavior of people who think that they can just freely say things like this and think it's okay. No, you make us all look bad when you do stuff like this. It's disgusting that you would go this far. But it seems like people don't understand. I don't care. Yeah, you don't care. That's the problem. You don't care. You don't care who it affects or who, you know, or who it impacts. That's the problem. But yet you want to be treated like an adult. Okay, I want to move on. Gamers petition Sega for Bayonetta, Vanquish, and Virtua Fighter 5 for the PC. I'm okay with that. The link will be in the info bar for that. There's no way that you can, like I said, I told you before, at this point in this generation, since we're in a new generation now, all right, multi, you know, multiple platforms and, you know, they, they all should have these same games so that we all can enjoy them. You shouldn't have to keep buying certain handhelds or certain consoles or whatever just to play one game. PC people, I'm okay with this. Seriously, I'm supporting this because everyone should be able to play what they want. If you blur the lines, or even I'll put it like this, uh, we've, we've talked about this before. Your online really should, should let everybody play with each other. Not just people on Xbox Live or people on PSN or just people on PC. Let them all go together, connect servers. Let, it, let, let the community be together. And I know right now you're saying, oh, that's blasphemy, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, I know. It's too much to think of. We've seen games do it, and we've seen other games be successful at it. But it seems like people still don't want to do that because they want you on their console, on their unit, on their server, on their network, and that's it. Money over what the community really wants. So that happens. But speaking about the community and what they really want and not getting, yeah. Rocksteady says that Batman Arkham Knight for the Wii U could not meet gameplay objectives. Therefore, you will not be getting Batman Arkham Knight, Wii U, you know, players. And I put it like this. 
for what they're saying about the Batmobile and, and things of that nature, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's just 30, frame, uh, 30 frames per second. It, that, that's not the problem here. It, it's the gameplay that they want to keep, you know, intact. However, what we saw last week with Wii U players, I don't know. After seeing that reaction, I'm not saying it's all Wii U players, but after seeing the way they reacted with, the, you know, with the Metal Gear thing, you know, I... I guess this will just be another backlash. I guess, you know, the attitude, uh, maybe they don't deserve it. I don't know. But then again, when you look at it, they're only acting this way because they're not getting the stuff that they want. So, I, I don't know. I don't know how you can ignore a market like that. Seriously, if you're going to do Batman Arkham Knight and you're going to do it for all these consoles, you can make another version for the Wii U. You could. All right? Just to say that we're just not going to do it all together. It, there's still something with that if, as far as I'm concerned. I still really believe that third party the third party industry is really just saying hey we're not going to play ball with the wii u and there has to be a, i i really feel there's a reason they're just trying to go against it but we don't have enough proof of it you know what i mean we just don't once they got rid of ea ea was like yeah they're dead to us and then they tried to backtrack and say no they're not dead whatever i you know what it's whatever anyways let, let's get on a little bit of positive news all right uh you can play uh Ultimate Naruto Online, Naruto Online game uh, for free. I'll put the link in the info bar for that, all right? Also, more positive news, uh, the Xbox One system color codes uh, are for player reputation. You can be rewarded for, you know, being courteous and good towards other players as, you know, other players who are in the red and really bad will get sent, you know, they tell you just to avoid them pretty much and they'll probably be sent to other, you know, other red players to play with. However, a lot of you have said that this system is it's a possibility that it can be manipulated by those bad players okay also uh playstation one uh, playstation survey uh hints that the, they're going to have a reputation system as well okay so the link will be in the info bar for that um a retailer allegedly is reselling a humble bumble uh humble bumble steam keys for profit here we go again with people trying to dick over the community once again for profit i told you wherever there's money to be made it's going to be a problem. And speaking of money to be made, Capcom, that's right, Capcom, uh, their net profit forecast has been cut in half after surprise business costs. Really, Capcom? How did you not see this coming? Seriously, we've seen it, you know what, this is how I feel about that, since they didn't see it coming. Surprise, motherfucker. It's amazing how Capcom didn't see it coming because they have their heads so far up their own ass, but we did. It's just crazy. As far as I'm concerned, if you're not going to listen to your fan base and what they want, then burn. Capcom, you should be ashamed of yourself for the things that you've done and the decisions that you made. Clearly, whoever is in charge going on in both sides, you are messing up badly, horribly. And I don't understand how nobody has stepped in yet and said, all right, look, we're going to right this wrong. We're going to take over this ship, and this is how it's going to go. And yet, no one still will do that. I understand that everyone's got shareholders and everybody wants, you know, certain figures and things of that nature. But it's time that you start looking back on what made you successful and go with it. Instead of saying, hey, we're going to bank on Street Fighter to keep the lights on. That's just, that's a desperation move. It really is. Now, I do want to move on. I want to talk about the fighting game community, okay? Because for those who don't know, not too long ago, uh, an interview with Fight, uh, was it, uh, Final Round 17, uh, interview with Filthy Rich and Scott Popular, that's right. They came out and talked about the state of the fighting game community. All right, hello everyone and welcome to Final Round 17. My name is Scott and this is my esteemed guest, Rich. What's going on, sir? Hello, sir. Um, Thanks for having me. As always, as always. Now, um, we've been around the block so many times. Yes. So many times. And we've been here for so damn long. And I don't know if we need to tell everyone our backstory Probably at not. this moment. But in 2014, where do we need to go as a whole? Not not the FGC, not just everybody. Where do we need to go? We need to play more games. Okay. We need to explore ways that we can talk about these games mm. and find more stories to talk about than the given. All right. And what topics do you think that we should talk about more? What topics should we touch on more as gamers or as consumers? To be honest, like there's a lot of things that, that have been inspiring me personally. Yeah. But it's like, what what good can come out of gaming? Okay. And I think there's a lot of things that could be touched up on there. 
it's a matter of prioritizing correctly. Okay. So, I mean, for me, like, there's a... I always get asked this question, and it, it, it's a great segue to jump into like, kind of what we're talking about right now, but, well, Rich, would you ever join in tournaments, like, for Killer Instinct, okay. specifically? Right. And the, what I tell people is, like, if I had a chance to play, I would love to play for some type of, like, benefit for people outside of our community, maybe people within our community, but to play for a charity, hmm. to play for, like, some type of, like, to be specific, like, I'd love to play for cancer research, mm -hmm. or I'd love to play for, um, you know, to help out foster kids, kids who just are troubled or who can't find homes or just can't find love in their life, hmm. but to show that aspect of something that we love that's paying out to, like, a, 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 just a greater pay bite payback in mm. life in general so and i think that these are things that are like hard to come by because you know fgc it's poverty gaming it's tough you yeah. know we we grew up learning how to budget a quarter and yeah. making that last right. for for a day or going to gamestop copping a used game and enjoying it with your friends just as much as anyone else would or just that like going over a friend's house and sharing that experience so it's hard to think outside of ourselves mm -hmm. because there's so much time that you need to invest okay. as a player who plays fighting games. But um, maybe that extra thought, and I've been seeing a lot of these things. Like there's this one guy out there, he plays uh, RPGs, like mm -hmm. uh, MMOs and all these other types of games, but he's been dedicating his life to like do these types of things. You know, this guy, Athene, okay. and a um, really inspiring guy. And I just saw his documentary, and I'm like, I'd love to see that. Or I'd love to see that branch out from people yeah. in our community because fighting game guys are smart. Yeah, the you, amount of variables you, and things that you have to think about to succeed in the games that you play just show the capacity of one's brain. Right, it requires a lot of thought. Hell yeah! But if we can use that brain or that brain power to exercise more than just winning and maybe trying to bring more love into the world, I think that would be a cool thing. Like, that's the type of exposure that we should go for. Not like, oh, this is an eight-time champ. Yeah. <laughs> no, the community, what if like the community raised $8 million for cancer yeah. research to help something out, to help the actual world, and that it was all sourced from games that require you to kick the shit out of somebody. All right. How many times? How many times have we seen others step up and say the exact same thing? How many times has yours truly stepped up and said the exact same thing? I'll put it like this. I am happy, though, that the awareness is spreading. I am happy to see that people are stepping up and saying, hey, look, this is something that needs to be taken care of. Let's let's get this, you know, let's get rid of all this right now and you know and get back to the positive things. Let's make this, let's clean this all up. I'm happy to see that. I really am. Also, over at Test Your Might, over at the website, the FGC uh, calls out its, you know, the players, their erratic behavior and top player treatment. I'm hoping that this, you know, a website has taken a stand on this. And like I said, the link will be in the info bar. I'm hoping that this also becomes infectious to other websites. So that they say, hey, look. You know, people are tired of this. We need to do something. Let's clean up, you know, our image. Let's clean up, you know, why people think that we're so bad. And the point is, the fighting game community isn't that bad. But when you start seeing all these things, you keep letting people get away with it because of who they are. No. Not one person is above this community. You understand that? It's amazing because when I say that, I've had people say, oh, you're, you're trying to be righteous and be above us. No, one person is not above the community. But when you see things that are happening, then you have to, it has to be addressed. You can't keep your head in the sand, man. You can't. And speaking of that, we have another possible threat on our hands with the FGC. This is what uh, one gamer sent me, okay, out of concern of what's going on with Blaze Blue here on YouTube, okay? Now it says, first of all, if you make the uh, make the vid, I uh, respectfully ask that you don't mention that it was requested to make this, or at least don't mention my identity because if it's known that I asked you to do this, I expect this guy and his fan base to harass the shit out of me. First off, I'm going to let it be known that this is a request because I did not know anything about this. Secondly, I will not release the person's name, he or she, because of their identity. They don't want to be harassed. I understand why. Okay? That's fine. But this is a requested part, okay? Now, I will put it like this. There is this series on YouTube called Guilty Bits. It's basically, it's, excuse me, it's basically designed as a primer on the newest Guilty Gear game to, uh, to help really, really new beginner players. It's a great concept in theory, but there is a bit of a catch to this, aside from the information being really basic and unhelpful, okay? 
It says, the guy responsible for, uh, for, the, uh, for these is planning a series for Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma uh, Blaze Bits. It says, Blaze Bits. It says, this would be a good idea since the game is new to the U.S., but, dot, 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 the guy who is responsible for the creation and editing of the series, Na uh, says, uh, Navril uh, Tataki, as well, uh, has as well publicized and is very outspoken hatred of Blaze Blue. So the person that's doing this series hates the series. Okay? You with me so far? Okay. He said, he's called its fans worse than cancer. That's going too far already. Okay? That's absolutely going too far. But let's keep going. It says, and has said many times that he wishes they would go away so that Guilty Gear can be popular again. Now, wait a minute. Without fans, a game can't become popular. Okay? If you're trying to say that these game these fans are erratic to the success of Guilty Gear when they're putting in the money to Guilty Gear, no, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. At this point, before I go any further, it sounds like this guy is really trying to be an elitist, but you have to understand that fans make or break games. Without their support, the game isn't made, so it won't be popular again. Without fans, the game can't be popular. Bottom line, okay? Now, it says, so with that in mind, why the hell would he be interested in doing a tutorial series for this game? It says, well, that's not the worst part. It says, for the creation of this series, he has opened a Kickstarter and is asking for 9.5K, meaning nine, you know, $9,500. You're opening a Kickstarter to do tutorials? Really? Right, just keep going. Just keep going. It says, given that he has already shown that he has the editing software and utilities necessary to create such a series as he's done it before, so what you need the money for if you already have stuff? Okay? It says, why the hell does he need this much money? It says, well, some people theorize that he's trying to scam money off people interested in the game he hates and will attempt to spread misinformation in the videos to try and sabotage the community. That is people being conspiracy theorists. But you never know. Seriously, why are you making a Kickstarter for something for, you know, for the, the equipment you already have and you've made series before, but you hate the fan base? It makes no sense. All right? If you don't like the fan base or you don't like the comments in your video, then, then shut up the, the comments then if that's the case, if that's the problem. But clearly, you want this. Now, look, I put it like this. There's no way in hell you should be asking for that much money to make tutorial videos. That is exploiting the community. No way around it. All right? But we'll keep going. It says, even if you don't believe that and think it's just a conspiracy theory, which I just said, it says, don't you think it's ridiculous to ask for that much money to make something he's already proven that he has the necessities to make? Yes, I just said that. Yes. It says, and isn't it a little suspicious that he's making the community of a game he says he hates give uh, he hates give him money to contribute to him, to them, I'm sorry, especially that much money. Yes, it makes no sense why he should be getting, you know, he should be raising a Kickstarter for something like this. You're trying to make money, amount, mass amounts of money, off of, you know, the game that clearly you don't like, or you're in the closet with liking, or trying to be an elitist. I, it, it's hard to call, okay? But to try and get that much money off a of Kickstarter for something you clearly already have the means of doing... There's no reason why you should be supported, okay? It says, if you look at his Twitter or either of his YouTube accounts, it says, play to win or Navro uh, Tataki. It says, or even his Google, uh, or even Google his name plus Blaze Blue, you can probably find many, many sources of his constant shitting on Blaze Blue and its community. So then what's the point of doing this? What's the point of doing these tutorials? What's the point of you trying to make money? All right, whatever. It says, really, this guy shouldn't even be making tutorials because he's a nobody. <sighs> That's not a good excuse, but we'll keep going. It says, he literally doesn't play the games at all. Not online, not offline, nothing. So what's the, what's the point of all this? It, but, all right. It says, and I know you've said in your vids that you shouldn't have to be a somebody to contribute to the community. No, you shouldn't. It says, and the fact that celebrity players need to be held to a better standard, as you often said. Yes, they should. The celebrity players, if they're going to get top player treatment, they need to be ambassadors to this then. 
They need to speak up. But instead, they're too busy trying to do their own thing. That's the problem. The community is not united. But it says, but if you literally have not done net play since you did uh, Street Fighter 4 troll videos with Zangief's headbutt back in like 2010. Okay, it, it that makes no sense. I mean, if that's all he's doing with net play, we you don't I, I don't know if you know this guy's everyday life, so you don't know if he plays or not, unless you follow him on whatever uh system he plays on, you know what I mean? It says, even with all this aside, just look at his tweets, vids, and the comments he makes on streams and other sites. Is this really the kind of guy we should be giving money to and trusting with information and lecture uh, and lecturing newbies? Uh, no. I mean, just the money alone, asking for that much money, puts up a red flag. It really does. It says, new players are the future, the lifeblood of how the community grows. I've said this before, without players, without support, the games do not survive. That simple. Uh, it says, if they come in with guides that cost money and are made by a guy who acts like this dude does, well, that's just a bad influence. And it's true, because you cannot, in, you, people don't understand how strong influence can be on people. It's why we see the things we see now in the, in the fighting game community. It's why we started seeing collusion. It's why we started seeing gambling. It's why we started seeing people grieve people. It's why, because influence. It started somewhere and people thought for some inane reason, hey, that's cool. No, it's not cool, but whatever. It says, you cannot put a price on knowledge. Very well said. It says, especially not if you're going to disrespect and intentionally misinform the community while doing it. We haven't seen any proof yet of misinforming, but what you're telling me, if he's trashing the game and he's trashing the community all the time and then he wants money to make videos, why watch, why watch him? Why support that? It makes no sense. It says, oh yeah, just do some looking around if you and see if you find this situation worth covering. It, it is, as you can see, I'm covering it right now. It's, um, it says, honestly... I thought this guy was a really negative influence on the community for the longest time, and just looking at his tweets and vids will do just that. Look, I'm done with this. People need to understand, all right? If this is true, and I'm saying if this is true, the fighting game community needs to come together and put an end to this. Understand that no matter what type of game that you like, all right, whether it's Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or Blaze Blue or Persona or whatever the case may be, King of Fighters, whatever. All right, Skullgirls, whatever. All right, fighting games are fighting games and they all belong in our community when it comes to the fighting game community. If one game is being exploited, whether you like it or not, you need to step up and say, hey, we're not going to have this. Like I said, this is something that clearly you know what i mean like if, th if this is true clearly needs to be talked about it needs to be addressed if this guy is trying to pull a fast one on new players that's not cool all right and trying to make some money in the process no and i put it like this if this goes through and he makes he gets he reaches his goal that's going to set an entirely new standard influence because if he gets away with it he's either going to try to do it again or someone's going to follow that lead and that's not right. All for tutorial videos? You've got to be kidding me. Anyone can do tutorial videos, especially when you already have the knowledge. Hell, you can. I've seen guys do tutorial videos off of their cell phone, mount their cell phone to the TV and do it, and come out with good, you know, good tutorial videos. So I'm not trying to hear you need that great technology to do it. But since you already have it, there's no excuse for you not to do it. You're just trying to get paid off of a game that either you you like or you don't like it's kind of hard to tell right now but there's no reason you should be getting paid off of this that's disgusting if anything maybe it's time that somebody alert you know people making blaze blue maybe it's time to do that and say hey you know look at this look what's going on what are you saying about your community you know and he, he, he's trying to sabotage it and hey don't ever think that community you know that companies or communities don't have blacklists don't ever think that like i said if if this is true and if it is true, I'm telling you now, because you all know I don't have a problem going with people, you know, going right after them. If this is true, I will address this in the future. I'm done for the day, man. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. I'm out.